I recently did a spotlight video on the brilliant engine replacement OpenJKDF2, and someone asked for an installation guide. So here you go. The guide is split into three parts. The timestamps are here, and in the video description. First navigate to the GitHub page of OpenJKDF2. Next you'll want to click on the bit that says Releases. Scroll down until you see the word Assets. Clicking on that will open a drop down menu that lets you select between four different options. We want the one called win64debug.zip. Click on that and it will download. In order for this to work, make sure you have Jedi Knight installed in the first place. The zip file you've just downloaded doesn't contain the game because that would be illegal. So you have to provide a legit copy of it yourself. This installation guide will work for both the GOG and Steam versions of the game. And OpenJKDF2 does work with the original CD edition. But for now, we'll just use the Steam version. Now that Jedi Knight is installed, I can find the game contents by either clicking on the cog over here and going to properties, or right clicking on the game in the library menu and hitting properties. After doing that, I go to the local files submenu and then hit the browse button. Your Jedi Knight game directory should now magically open. Now I open another window and direct it to the place that you downloaded the zip file. Then double click on that file. You'll see a pile of DLLs inside, don't panic about that. All these files go in the same place. In your Jedi Knight folder, you should have a file called Jedi Knight.exe, or possibly JK.exe, depending upon the version. This is in the base directory of the game, that Steam will have opened for you by default. Drag the files from the zip into that folder, and replace any files when Windows asks if you want to. A new executable will now be in that directory, called OpenJKDF2-64. If you double click on that, Jedi Knight will load using OpenJKDF2. But there's one more step we can do for Steam users in order to make it launch from Steam automatically. Select the file called Jedi Knight.exe and rename it to anything you want. Then select OpenJKDF2-64 and rename it to Jedi Knight.exe. This tricks Steam into thinking that it's loading the original executable when it's actually loading the engine replacement. You'll know if this has worked because when the game launches it will be windowed and have a terminal beside it. You can modify it so that it runs in full screen once you get to the proper menu. There we are, Jedi Knight with widescreen and 60 frames a second. You can then go into the game properties and adjust everything else that you want to. You'll see that OpenJKDF2 has a pile of new features as well. Since all of this works perfectly in Proton, most Linux users will be satisfied by just copying the directions above, but there's always some that aren't. But first, comprehensive Macintosh instructions, thanks to additional footage kindly provided by super subscriber Karina. Download the macosdebug.tar.gz from the releases section of the GitHub I talked about at the start of this video, and extract the app. Drag the app into the Applications folder to install it. Run the application, and tell it where your Jedi Knight files are on your Macintosh. Simple as that, really. If you insist on being awkward and using the Linux native version of OpenJKDF2, you're going to have to compile from source. And the building.md file in the GitHub and description of this video lists both the dependencies and the terminal commands for Arch and Ubuntu in order to both acquire the source and build it directly from the command line. I'd offer a walkthrough on this, but I'm going to assume if you're already building things natively from source using the terminal, that you already know more about computing than I do, and don't really need a tutorial. Just remember to ensure that all your dependencies are satisfied first. After doing this, you should still be wary of version numbers, as this does require 3.2 of CMake, so certain Ubuntu users or Linux Mint users may need to update that using a different repository. Otherwise, it should be a case of copying and pasting terminal commands from the GitHub, and then making sure that OpenJKDF2 knows where the Jedi Knight files are. 
But if you're running into problems, don't come running to me. I'd instead suggest lodging a report on GitHub or contacting the author of OpenJKDF2 directly and using a compatibility layer for the time being instead. Because honestly, they work perfectly well. Hopefully that's been helpful. Lonnie, away! <laughs>